So welcome to this NDSU Ag Communication webinar for September. I'm Bob Birch, Web Technology Specialist with NDSU Agriculture Communication. And we're going to be talking about online forms. Um, we've talked about online forms in different uh, uh, places uh, over time in NDSU Extension. Um, but recently, there were a couple of additions to Microsoft Office 365 Excel Survey and Microsoft Forms. So I thought I would share those with you, uh, let you know a little bit about those, and then also talk a little bit more about Google Forms and Qualtrics, which might be platforms that you may or may not be familiar with, but we've had access to here at NDSU uh, for some time. Um, I see Brenda's on. Um, I'm going to disclose up front, I am not the Qualtrics expert. I'm not saying Brenda is the Qualtrics expert because then she'll probably get mad at me that she'll be getting a lot of phone calls and questions. But Qualtrics really is a tool that we're all learning about together. Brenda's used it a lot more than I have and, and some of you, other of you may have used Qualtrics a lot more as well. But we'll talk a little bit about it and, and see what questions you have. Anytime that you have questions, uh, please go ahead and post them into the chat. Um, if you want to uh, interrupt me with your microphone, you're welcome to do that uh, as well and ask your question uh, using your audio. So I'm gonna go ahead and, and share my screen here and we're gonna start talking about Excel survey. All right, everybody, well, it may take a second here, but it has, is anybody seeing my screen yet? should be seeing my Office 365 open. Let me close Skype for business. Okay, great. Okay, so Excel Survey. Excel Survey is um, accessible to you through your Office 365. I hope pretty much everybody should know how to log into that. Um, the, the typical way people get there is to go to the NDSU homepage, click on Online Services, uh, and then um, it used to say webmail. They've actually changed it now, and I can't remember what they've they've changed it to. Um, but there's a link there that will uh, make it obvious. Oh, it just says email. Thanks, Becky. Um, so click on email, and you'll log in uh, with your your Microsoft credentials, which is really what you get into your Outlook with. You know, your full NDSU email address, and then whatever your Outlook uh, password is, um, and that will give you access to this online version of not just your Outlook email and calendar, but other Office tools as well. To access uh, an Excel survey, uh, those are uh, in your OneDrive. So what you'll do is go up here to the top left, that, that well, I call that the waffle menu or the grid menu. Um, that appears at the top left if you have your screen expanded, um, your window expanded. Uh, if, if you have your window a little bit smaller, it might move to the top right, but it'll be up at the top there somewhere. Um, go ahead and click on that, and you can see you've got a lot of different tools there that you can access, and one of them is OneDrive. And we've talked about OneDrive and, and Google Drive as our cloud storage systems, uh, I think on a previous webinar. Um, so you can go back and learn more about that uh, by watching the archive of that webinar. Um, and you can find that on the Ag Communication page, www.ag.ndsu.edu slash agcom. Um, and, uh, but this OneDrive is basically cloud-based storage uh, and collaboration space uh, for Microsoft documents. And if I wanted to create an Excel survey, it's super simple. I just click the new button up here, just like I was gonna create anything in OneDrive. And you can see now uh, recently added is Excel survey. So let me go ahead and click on that. And you can see the first thing that uh, that I'm asked for is the name of the survey. So I'm going to put a, a name in here. And the other thing that you might notice is that at the end of that namespace, it says .xlsx. That means it's going to be an Excel spreadsheet. And, and Excel surveys are really tightly integrated into Excel spreadsheets. That can be a, a good thing, but it can also be something that's a little bit uh, challenging. And we'll talk about that in, in a few minutes. So let's go ahead and create this survey. Here we go. So hopefully you can see on the screen share, uh, the first thing that kind of opened up was the Excel spreadsheet, right? So that that's an illustration that Excel surveys are really integrated into the spreadsheet. And then I got this box over the top that allows me to, to create these, these surveys. 
Excel surveys are really for uh, really quick surveys. There's not a ton of functionality here, but if you want to throw together a really quick survey um, and have those have those responses, have it available online and have those responses load into an Excel spreadsheet, um, you know, this is the ticket. Um, it's really quick to do. So pretty simple steps and straightforward. The first thing here is just entering a title for your survey. This is the title that people are going to see. And then you might enter a description. So yeah, that description might be, here's what the survey's for, or maybe some instructions on how to fill the survey out. Um, pretty straightforward and simple so far. And then you can see it says, enter your first question here. When I click on that, it's gonna pop up this little uh, settings box here where I can enter in uh, the, my question. So the actual text of the question would go in here. If I want a subtitle, again, maybe some instructions there, you know, make sure that you put in your full email address or, or something like that, or um, you can do that. And then you have here the response type, which would be the equivalent of like a question type in Google Forms or Qualtrics. And the question types here are really limited. I'm trying to mouse over them and have them stay popped up there, uh, which is a little bit problematic when I'm screen sharing, but you can see them there. So a text question is just like the, the sample question that you see there. That's just one uh, field that somebody can type in, you know, a single line or a single word or phrase. Um, a paragraph text, go ahead and look at those. You can, you know, that just gives you the whole text box where you can type in more than one line. Oh, come on. Uh, you have a number field, so it would restrict it, validate it to make sure it's a number that goes into there. There's a date field. I'll click on that. Um, that's a little bit slow loading here, but again, that's validated to only take a date. Um, same with time. You have a yes and no. Very simple. You don't have to do a multiple choice for yes and no. You just get a drop down for yes and no. And then you have a choice, which is your, your multiple choice uh, question and you can put your choices in here. Each question has a, a required uh, checkbox. So you can require it, you know, that way the survey cannot be submitted unless somebody fills that out. Um, and then also you can choose a default answer. So it's the one that appears uh, before anybody types, types anything in. So um, sometimes that might help you lead people to, to fill out the, the uh, survey in the way that you want. And that's really it. So very lightweight, uh, not a lot of um, extra features and those kinds of things. Just a, a simple way to create a very uh, simple survey. A couple of things that I'll point out about that um, here, and uh, we just have our test one in here. We'll go ahead and save it and look at it online. So when I click save and view, that gives me the opportunity to see, okay, what is this going to look like to the end user? and you can see it there, your title, your description, your questions, have as many questions as you want, and then the submit button uh, would be allowed there. Uh, and then when I go to share the survey, I'm waiting for that to load here, hopefully you can see that, it just gives me a link, very simple URL, I can post that on a website, I can send it in an email to a listserv, um, and you know, send it to people one by one, uh, put it out in a social media post, whatever I want to do. There's no restrictions on who can access it. So it's just a link to a website. You go out to the survey and, and complete it and uh, click submit and, and you're done. So things that are missing in here, and we'll talk a little bit about uh, these more when we talk about the other tools. Um, some of the things that are missing, the question types. Okay, so there's a multiple choice uh, option, but there's not a checkbox option where I could choose multiple items. Let me open up the survey that I sent out uh, via email uh, yesterday, and quite a few people actually filled that out. Let me pull that up here. Hopefully things are a little bit slow. Any questions so far, go ahead and type those in the chat pod if you do have questions and hopefully my Office 365 will load. Here it comes. So let me take a look at that survey that I sent out yesterday. 
So it was in my OneDrive where I created it and it shows up just like a spreadsheet. And you can see here, this is what I get when I, um, when I take a look at that survey, it's just the results in the spreadsheet, each person who filled it out and what they, and what they typed in. Um, in order to access the actual survey form, the online form that people fill out, um, I need to edit this uh, Excel workbook and I have to edit it in the browser. If I edit it in Excel and it opens the full version of Excel on my desktop, I'm not gonna have access to the survey through there. I have to edit it in the browser with Excel online. And once that loads, you'll see up at the top in my toolbar up here, one of my choices is survey. And I can come in here and edit that survey. So I bring this up to point out a couple of things. Um, I actually sent this test to Sonia, and Sonia is really great at catching me on details. Um, and I had her, had her try it out, and she sent back and said, um, you know, why don't you have the first question be a, be a drop-down uh, box? Um, or, you know, where you could actually have some choices in there. And why don't you have the last question uh, not force people to choose one, but have them be able to choose, you know, multiple tools that they've used to create a survey. And I would have liked to do that, but that's not available in Excel survey, okay? So um, you don't have that checkbox kind of question where you can have multiple options and have them, um, have the user check multiple uh, multiple options. Okay, questions so far. Yeah, a couple of things that are in the notes there for those of you who are in the notes. No theming, right? It's going to look every survey is going to look exactly the same. Uh, I mentioned no way to to limit the respondents. Um, and then another another potential downside of this is that there's no way to share the spreadsheet with a collaborator. If you're working. Um, uh, let me take it back. There's no way to share the survey with the with uh, the collaborators to be able to work on the survey um, together. Um, once you have it in a spreadsheet and you have the stuff filled out, you can share that just like you'd share any other uh, file in your OneDrive uh, with some other folks. So maybe somebody can correct that in my notes. It should say can share. Uh, can share the spreadsheet with the collaborators. I guess it says that, right? But you can't sh you can't share the creation of the of the survey uh, with collaborators. Questions about Excel survey? Do you think it's something that is a good option as lightweight compared to say Google Forms or Qualtrics, or is this like it's so lightweight? When would I ever use it? No, no thoughts. Okay, that's okay. You don't, you don't have to have thoughts. Too lightweight for Stacy. Yeah, def, yeah. Some of the stuff that Stacy's been talking to me about doing that definitely is not gonna fit her, uh, her needs. Yeah. So Becky says voting. Yeah, definitely. Very simple. You know, just some, just some. A multiple choice, one to multiple choice questions, boom, you're off and ready to go. Contact information, Christina says, good one. Would this work to survey people during a meeting? Sure. Um, definitely, definitely would, Lisa. Um, as long as your questions were, you know, you, you weren't too restricted by those qu limited question types um, if you were just wanted to get some multiple choice ones. No. Um, no images, no formatting, no sections. Like we're talking super simple, lightweight. Okay. So because that's sort of where the where the questions are going, let me show you another tool that's new to Office 365 that um, does have some of that stuff, and that's Microsoft Forms. So Microsoft Forms um, is a little bit tricky to access for us. Um, it's not too bad, but let me show you how you would get access to it. If you if you come up to your waffle menu when you're in Office 365, if you can get it to load, which I'm having trouble doing right now. Let's try that again. Maybe I should have clicked that button while I was talking about other things so you didn't have to Wait, there it comes. All right. So when you when you open up your waffle menu, 
you're not going to see forms. It's not going to be on there. Um, as of yesterday, it wasn't on mine. Okay, but you can access it. And the way that you would do that is to go to this link here that says View All My Apps. It's right in the waffle menu down at the bottom. I'll wait for that to load up, and it's going to show you your apps on this on this uh, page like this. And if you go up into Search Apps and type Forms, then Forms is going to show up. Now, because you haven't added it to your your menu of apps yet, uh, you'll have to install it. Um, there'll be a button there. I can't exact, remember exactly what it says, um, but I had to do it. I had to click like install and it takes a little bit for it to load into your app menu. Um, but then once you do, it's there forever, um, or at least for the, for the near future, we'll see as long as we don't have too many uh, major changes in, in how we uh, access our Office 365. Um, so once you have forms installed, when you go to your waffle menu, it's gonna just show up right here or somewhere else in that grid, but you'll, you'll be able to find it. So let me go ahead and open up my forms and show you what that looks like. Okay, so it's gonna show me any of the forms that I've already created. And then if I wanna create a new one, I just click new. Very, very simple, just like we did before. We need to put a, uh, a title in. We might wanna add a description and then we can go ahead and start adding questions. So here are the question options uh, inside of Microsoft Forms. Um, there's only five of them, but they have multiple uh, functions. So um, there's, there's a little bit more than five. So the first one here is multiple choice. I'm gonna go ahead and click on that one. So this is pretty straightforward, multiple choice uh, question, um, but it also has a button down here for multiple answers. So in, in Google Forms, if you've ever created a Google Form, and I, I can't exactly remember how it is in Qualtrics, in Google Forms, you have a multiple choice question type, and then you have a checkbox question type. Multiple choice forces users to answer, you know, to choose just one option, um, and the checkbox lets you choose multiple options. Here in Microsoft Forms, that's packaged into one question. So if I want just one option to be force users to choose only one, I just leave it as it is. If I want them to be able to choose multiple, then I just turn this on and now it's changed from a multiple choice to that, that checkbox uh, style, okay? You also have your required here. You can turn that uh, on and off as well. Some of the other question types, the quiz question here, Microsoft has really been focusing on that teacher market um, and, and their apps for education audience. And so uh, this is pretty much like a multiple choice or a checkbox question. Uh, the difference is you can choose which one's the correct answer, okay? So if you are doing some kind of quiz, uh, you can uh, say this one is the correct answer and you can assign points to that. Okay, so it really does become like an online quiz. If you're doing um, four credit courses at, at NDSU, you know, you, you can do a lot of that stuff using Blackboard. Um, uh, so this might not be helpful to you, but if you're doing something that uh, is non-credit um, or adult education where you don't have access to Blackboard easily, uh, that might be an option for you is to use this quiz uh, question option in Microsoft Forms. Few other ones, the text one, I mentioned that some of these questions types ha do double duty. This is another one that, that does that. You choose text question and you just get the one line like we saw in uh, Excel survey where you just had text question, um, but where's the paragraph text? What if I want people to be able to you know, add comments? Well, instead of having a different question type here, I just, I just turn on this long answer and you can see that box expands from one uh, line to multiple lines so people can put in uh, multiple lines uh, in, a, in a comments kind of way. Okay. Um, the rest of the question types pretty self-explanatory. Um, well, maybe not. Let's look at rating. Uh, so this is something that was not available in Excel surveys. Um, this is your Likert scale, you know, and you can choose how many levels you want um, five or ten I guess not a whole lot of choices here um, 
you have a little a few more choices in uh, in Google Forms and Qualtrics definitely for those levels of the Likert scale. Um, and then you can also choose your symbol. That's kind of cool. You can choose a number or you can do the star kind of thing. So that's maybe a, a little bit of a some added feature there. Okay. So there's your ratings. Uh, does that menu expand three dots next to required? Yeah, it does. There's not a ton there, right? So here it's just your subtitle and your label. Subtitle will be the kind of thing that would uh, show up um, if the question was loading or if somebody was using uh, a screen reader and uh, you know it, they maybe couldn't see all of the text there. Um, so there's not a lot of, of extra features there under that little ellipsis. Um, in terms of the multiple choice questions, or this is actually a quiz question, um, one of the options you have there is to, you can see shuffle the options, you know, so they're not in the same order every time. Uh, when you look at a checkbox or multiple choice question, your options, you can shuffle the options or you can turn it into a quiz question. If you intended to, to, to do a quiz question, you chose choice anyway. So that's what's under there, Lisa. Thanks for asking that. And then I think I think we saw the date, uh, date, time, question type. Uh, that was that was there as well. So if you want people to be to submit a particular date as uh, the answer to a question, whether that's a birth date or a date they're available or or anything like that. So that is the creation of the um, of the uh, survey. Um, so a uh, question about inbuilt analysis and survey results. We'll look at some of the response data here in just a second. I want to I want to cover a couple of things that are available here that aren't available in Excel surveys. One is the theming. So there's some colors you can choose from and some funky backgrounds if you want to have an octopus uh, undersea uh, background behind your your uh, survey. You can do that. Um, the preview button self-explanatory just shows you what it will look like to the user. And then when we click send form here, well, hold on. Before I go to send form, uh, let me talk about one more thing, and that's branching. So one of the things that's uh, available in Microsoft Forms that we didn't see in Excel surveys is branching. And what branching means is um, to, to uh, send people to a particular place based on their answer to a question. So let's take a look at that. Br branching is up here under this more options ellipsis up in the top right. And we just ch choose branching and it will open up uh, in the first question where where you can apply branching and usually when you're doing branching that only applies to the multiple choice uh, questions so if we come in here and say if people choose option one what should we do we should go to question three if they choose option two we're going to send them to the end of the form and uh, some of you that filled out this, uh, this survey, the survey that I created in Microsoft Forms, saw how that worked. Um, if you have branching uh, in place, uh, what will happen, and we can take a look at this too, so it makes a little bit more sense, but we'll, what will happen is that question three will not appear uh, in this case. Um, if I click option one under question two, all of a sudden question three will sort of expand out underneath question two. If I if I click option two, it's just gonna send me to the end of the form. So there's some control there in terms of uh, having uh, the appearance of a question uh, dependent on a person's answer to a previous question, okay? So let's, let me open up um, one of my other forms here, the one that we, that we used for um, for the test here to take a look at the at the response data. Um, so here's my survey. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and preview that, show you how that branching works because I did use branching in here. So you can fill this out. If I say yes to this question, we're going to see a third question. If if I say no, nothing's going to happen. So if I click no, nothing's going to happen. If I change to yes, boom, question three shows up. So that's an example of that of that branching. Um, so let's take a look at the responses when we get into here. Um, so you've got your, your questions here when you're looking at it in Microsoft Forms and then your responses. And this automatically is compiled for you in this, uh, in this view. 
so you can see how many responses, the average time it took people to complete the survey, um, the status that it's active right now, I'm still allowing people to, to complete the survey. Um, you know, and then bar chart, depending on your question type, you're gonna get a little bit of different kinds of charts and graphs, but you can get a quick look at, okay, what are the results? And if you want more details on any of those questions, you can just click this little details button and now you can see uh, the ID and the, and the response. Now this, this survey I sent out with an anonymous link. So everybody shows up as anonymous. You can send out the survey and restrict it to people who have an NDSU Office 365 login. Basically, they're part of our of our Active Directory, and when they follow that link, they'd be asked to log in um, to Microsoft Office 365 before they completed the survey. When you do that, um, when you do that, you're going to see names associated with survey results. It's not anonymous anymore. I mean, that would be the point of having them log in, then you'd see names uh, uh, associated with that. So downside of, of forms, uh, well, let me back up. I'm losing my place a little bit. Um, sending the form, I do wanna show you that because it's got some options in it uh, that you might wanna be aware of. So I'm gonna click send form. You can see here, you know, I've got a, a link just like I did in Excel survey that I could copy and paste somewhere, add it to a website. Um, I could email the link right from here. You know, I'm inside of my Microsoft account here, so it can use my Outlook account to send out an email, uh, including, you know, accessing, you know, an actual uh, Outlook message here so that I could use my address book to find the people I want to send it to. Um, another thing that is kind of cool, if you have the opportunity to do it, is you can download and send a QR code. It creates a QR code for you. Um, automatically and then uh, you can download that and you know print it on something uh, put it up on a screen when you're given a presentation anything like that people can use a QR reader on their phone uh, to get to the survey rather than having to find that link and then a couple things down here at the bottom um, you can see this who can fill out this form down in the bottom right um, if I say only people in my organization, that's where you're going to have to log in to access the survey. And then there's also a, a link here that says see all settings. And there's a couple of things that you might uh, be interested in here. Uh, one is, you know, I could turn off accepting responses. And the other is I could apply a deadline. So if I wanted to say leave this survey open until, you know, tomorrow at 4 p.m., I could do that. And, it, and tomorrow at 4 p.m., this, the survey would become unavailable. Okay, uh, are we not seeing on the far right the settings? Uh, you should see who can fill out this form on the far right, only people in my organization. Are you guys seeing that? Okay, so Mary's seeing that. So it's in the far right of my screen share, Becky. It, you should see options for responses there and apply deadline and then that's where you'd see the Okay, yeah. Yeah, thank you for taking notes, by the way, Becky. Great. Okay, um, so th those are the options in terms of sending the form. I did want to cover those. So there's been a couple of questions about what's it look like in Excel. Um, before I open that up, uh, I just want to mention a couple things about this. This is not shareable, um, and you're not able to invite collaborators to a, to a Microsoft form. What you can do if you want to share the responses is to share the spreadsheet. So if we open this in Excel, wait for this to pop up here, open that up, All right? So here it is, it's, it opens in Excel on my desktop. Uh, this is what it, it looks like. For those who are asking about that, I'll, I'll enlarge it so you can kind of see uh, a little bit more of that. And I could scroll over if you want to see the other answers. There's the yes, no question. There's uh, the, uh, the multiple choice questions here are actually checkbox questions where you can uh, answer more than one answer there. So this is what it ends up looking like at Excel. If I wanted to share this, now I could put this back out on OneDrive, uh, save it to OneDrive, and then share it from there uh, with collaborators if we wanted them uh, to be able to see that. Okay. Was there anything, uh, Lisa or Agathi, that you wanted to see in the spreadsheet or is that 
what, or Mindy, I'm sorry, is who asked about the spreadsheet. Mindy or Lisa? Is it? Okay. All right, cool. All right, so let me get rid of that spreadsheet here. I think I covered everything looks messier than I want to deal with. Yeah. Um, well, if you're an Excel, I'm not an Excel person, but those of you who are on the call uh, who are Excel uh, aficionados, you probably can figure out a way to make that look much better, you know, using some some forms and charts and those kinds of things. So the results only available in the form output. Um, well, they're available in the spreadsheet. Uh, Agathi. And then I didn't mention we're looking at the summarized responses here. I can look at them individually too. There's an individual button here. And so I could look at each response individually if I wanted to do that. Does that answer your question or am I missing the point of your question? Okay. All right. So I think I've covered everything about Microsoft Forms. Anything, any other questions about Microsoft Forms? Uh, I don't think the charts are downloadable in, in, in Excel. Not that I've been able to figure out how to do it. Um, I can maybe screen capture this or anything, but if you, if you download the spreadsheet, then you're gonna have to create your own charts and, and uh, graphs uh, within the spreadsheet. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna pop over to, to Google Forms here. This will be a little bit quicker just because a lot of this is exactly the same as Microsoft Forms are very, very similar. So we're not seeing uh, anything too terribly different or new. Um, but you do have access to uh, Google Apps for Education uh, through your NDSU account. Um, if you have, don't know how to access your Google Drive uh, and Google Apps for Education through your NDSU email, just go to the ITS website. It's uh, www.ndsu.edu slash ITS and search for Google Drive. And all the, all the instructions are there about how you access that. Um, so I'm here in my NDSU Google Drive. I know it's my NDSU Google Drive and not my personal one because way up in the top of left corner, I see the NDSU uh, logo. So I know I'm on my, my NDSU Google Drive. And if I wanted to create um, a Google form from here, there's a couple of different ways that I can do it. The way that I've done it for uh, a long time <laughs> um, is to go to new here and then click more and then choose Google Forms. Uh, and that, that works absolutely fine. Um, there's a better way now to create them, I think. And that is to go up here to the top right there's a, uh, a waffle menu, of, a Google waffle menu up here um, that shows you your Google apps. And so if I click on that and then click more, I'm going to see one of my apps is Forms, Google Forms. And if I click on that, uh, it's actually going to open up more in uh, sort of a view like we saw with Microsoft Forms that shows me all my forms. Um, and also gives me access to some, some templates that I can use. Now these aren't aren't just themes that control the look of them, but actual templates to get started with. So if you're, if you're trying to collect contact information instead of spending the time to make each question that you need, you could say, hey, I'm just gonna create this from this template for contact information. Here I go, I've got fields for name, email address, phone number, and comments, and then I could add to that. Um, so that's, that's kind of nice, and, and you only see that if you create your form from the Forms app. If you create it directly from Google Drive where I went new, uh, more, and then Google Forms, it just pops open and says, here, create your form. So a little bit easier if you go to that waffle menu and choose Forms uh, from your available Google apps. So let's, let me go back and, and here are some of the forms that, that I've created uh, just looking at a sample one here, you can see it's very, very uh, close to what we saw with Microsoft Forms. Um, the question types are a little bit different. Uh, you can see I have multiple choice and then a separate question type for checkboxes if I want uh, to allow people to choose multiple options. Um, there's a third one here that's a drop down, uh, and it's like a multiple choice or a checkbox. It could be either one, but it shows in a drop down menu instead of uh, as 
a, a multiple choice, and when we preview that, you'll see uh, you actually click it and it expands uh, to show you the options there. Um, linear scale, that's the same as the ratings one, the kind of Likert scale that we saw in Microsoft Forms. Short answer, paragraph, those are two separate ones in, in Google Forms, where in Microsoft Forms they're the same. Uh, date and time, self-explanatory kind of things. The one that is that is not present in Microsoft Forms uh, that is in Google Forms is a multiple choice grid. So what I can do is uh, create a question um, like, you know, rate the following aspects of my presentation and then say row one, you know, loveliness of voice, um, row two, attractiveness of presenter, you know, row three, uh, you know, readability of PowerPoint presentation or something like that, and let people rate each one of those uh, items on a scale. Um, and you can require one response per row, so you have some options there. When we get into Google Forms, we have a little bit more expanded opportunity too for things like images. So if I want to add an image, I could put a drop an image right in the middle of my form and say, you know, look at the image above. If it was a quiz or something, look at the image above and tell me this. Or maybe if it's just a survey, look at the image above and you know, uh, give your comments, your reaction to that image, uh, something like that. Um, you can also add titles and descriptions to sort of separate uh, areas uh, of, the, uh, of the survey. You can add in YouTube videos. So watch the video above and then respond to this particular survey. And then the other thing that you can do is to add sections. Um, and sections really help with branching in, uh, in Google Forms. So we saw how branching worked in Microsoft Forms. Um, it's pretty straightforward. But in Google Forms, uh, in order to jump, uh, they don't have that ability to sort of uh, hide a question and then expand it. So in order to uh, have that sort of approximated, then you would create a section, right? So for the sample survey that I sent you guys, questions one and two were in the first section, question three was in the second section, and then based on the answer to question two, I either sent you to section two or to that to the submit button, right? So those sections help you uh, sort of create that branching. Um, once you have the sections created, the branching uh, becomes pretty obvious. Let me let's get a let's get a question in. Uh, let's get a question in here. I can find my move button here. So here's a, a multiple choice question. Now that I have another section, I could um, come in here and under this little ellipsis menu and say go to section based on answer. And then if they choose option one, continue to the next section or go to section one or go to section two, depending on how many sections you have or all the way down to submit form. And so if I had another option, I could say, okay, if they answer this, go to section, oops, sorry, section two. And if they answer this, go to submit form. And that's what I did on the survey, the sample survey that I sent you guys out so that uh, your your ability to see question three was dependent on how you, you, how you answered question two. Am I making any sense? I feel like I'm rambling a little bit, but Questions about that or anything that I said that was unclear? I don't see anybody typing. You can use your microphones too if you want to unmute. Oh, Christine is typing. Okay. So a few other things about Google Forms then. Up here at the top, um, this is where we'd have our send options. So similar to Microsoft Forms, um, we can check or uncheck whether we want to collect uh, NDSU usernames. If we do that, they're going to have to log into their NDSU Google account before they can answer. Um, so, you know, if you want the public to answer this, you would leave that unchecked. They wouldn't have an NDSU Google account. Um, I can email out the link. Uh, I can get the link here. Uh, I can even shorten that URL right in Google if I want to just by clicking that. And I've got a little bit shorter URL uh, to my link. I didn't mention it when we looked at Microsoft Forms, but it's it's there as well here as it is in uh, Google Forms. You can get the embed code to embed the HTML into a web page, so the survey shows up inside the web page. They don't have to click something to go out and and get it. 
Um, so those things are available through here too. What you don't see that you saw in Microsoft Forms is the QR code that's not available uh, in Google Forms. A couple of other things about Google Forms. There are some settings here that I can control. Um, and it's good to check these settings because uh, even though in the send form it said we weren't going to collect usernames, there's still a checkbox in here about requiring sign in to the NDSU Google account. And if I was sending this to the public, I would need to uncheck that so that I uh, did not um, prevent them from filling out the survey. Um, you can limit it to one response. Um, here again, they're going to have to sign into Google, not NDSU's Google uh, instance of Google, but any Google sign in. Uh, that's the only way to limit people's response, stop them from submitting multiple times. Um, you can allow them to edit after submit. Um, we had, a, uh, I think Stacy asked that question, um, you know, if you're trying to collect maybe some, uh, some evaluation data over time or something like that. Uh, what happens is uh, if people uh, choose to and you have this clicked, they receive an email uh, with a link that would allow them to click that link and go back and add to their survey or change their survey. Uh, answers and so if you were collecting data over time you might allow that and then the other thing here is after I hit submit can I see other people's responses you know not by name but a summary of other people's responses um, and you can turn that on uh, as well um, there's some options here for presentation do you want a progress bar do you want to change the question order you know if you're doing a quiz you might want to shuffle that um, uh, do you want to show a link to submit another response um, if you want people to, to fill it out as many times as they want? And the other thing here uh, that we didn't have in Microsoft Forms that I like here is that I can control the confirmation message. So what happens when someone hits submit? What do they see? So I can put in my own message here instead of just your response has been recorded. You know, I could say thank you very much or this, important, this information is super important to NDSU Extension or, or whatever that might be. Um, and then you have some quiz options too. If you are using this for a quiz and I make it into the quiz, now all of a sudden I can uh, uh, do some things in terms of um, releasing grades and, and those kinds of things. Okay, so those are the settings. A couple of other things here. We have a preview button for this one as well. Um, the color palette, um, you can change the colors. You can see the, the color options there. This one down here in the right, it's not super intuitive, but you see the little picture here? That's how you would get to themes. If I click that, now I've got lots of different themes that I could use, um, you know, from sort of the work and school ones, you know, to birthday ones, etc. Um, I haven't tested that, Dean, about using it as a quiz and uh, and how are they associated with the students? Uh, I, I, you would definitely, um, yeah, it's similar to what we showed earlier. You would definitely want to require them to log in uh, to their uh, NDSU Google account, you know, so we would make sure that it was restricted to those users. And then you could, uh, then in the results, you would see that username and you could associate that username and the username for your NDSU Google account. It's not anything cryptic or anything. It's just your email address, right? So it's it's uh, your NDSU email address. So you could associate someone's responses on a quiz with their NDSU email address if you required them to log into their Google account. And we'll take a look at the responses uh, in just a moment here. And the, yes, they are similar to what we saw in in Microsoft Forms. So lots of themes to choose from here. Let's cancel that. Um, one other thing, uh, oh, that was not what I wanted to do. Let's go back to the um, let's go back to the sample survey that I sent out to you, so we can take a look at a at a survey that has some responses in it. So here, if I click on responses, just like we saw in uh, Microsoft Forms, uh, it compiles it into some graphs and charts for you. A little bit different than than Microsoft Forms, um, but you can see. Uh, similar in terms of how the data is laid out. You know, this one's a horizontal bar chart instead of vertical bar chart like it was in, in Microsoft Forms, but, but pretty similar. I can also, as in Microsoft Forms, view the individual data. And scroll through those one by one. Um, and then I can also uh, download this into a spreadsheet. 
I shouldn't have said download, I can create a spreadsheet. So we're in a Google environment here. So if I choose to create a spreadsheet from this, it's going to create a separate Google file, a Google sheet, okay? Um, and I can create a new one or I could select an existing Google spreadsheet to import that data into. But once I hit create here, then you'll get to see what this looks like in the spreadsheet form. Make these columns a little bit bigger so you can see what that looks like. Again, an anonymous survey, so no usernames or anything like that. Uh, we only have one column for the timestamp because Google Forms don't measure how long it took someone to fill it out like Microsoft Forms did. We had two columns over there for times, the time started and time uh, submitted. Um, but otherwise, they look pretty much the same. So you have this in Google Sheets. You can share that with other collaborators or other people, uh, you know, uh, just like you could in OneDrive. Um, but if you want to get it into Excel uh, so that you can do some of that Excel magic that, that Excel people love to do, um, all you need to do is come here to File, Download As. You can download it as an Excel XLSX or you can download it as uh, CSV. Uh, and open it up into Excel as well. Okay, so that is all available. So did I miss anything about any of that? Questions about Google Forms? I'm gonna talk, go ahead and post them to the chat if you do have questions about Google Forms or interrupt me if you wanna use your microphone. Um, I'm gonna talk a little bit about Qualtrics and I will pop Qualtrics open here. Uh, you want, if you want access to Qualtrics, learn more about Qualtrics, whatever. Um, there is a short URL to get to the page that has that information. It's ndsu.me uh, slash Qualtrics. And here's the page on the Group Decision Center. Uh, they're the ones who brought Qualtrics to campus and then, uh, you know, through uh, the encouraging of the president, uh, expanded that to access to everybody uh, on campus and off uh, in terms of employees and faculty and uh, students as well. Uh, so this page has uh, some important things. You know, as I mentioned, I'm not a Qualtrics expert. There's not anybody on campus who is really Qualtrics support that I know of. Brenda, if, if there is somebody uh, that you found out about, let me know. But the best way that uh, people have told me uh, to learn about Qualtrics is to watch the webinars, watch the videos online. And those, some of those webinars are, um, are available here in this left-hand column uh, for Qualtrics. Your login for Qualtrics is available here too. It's just ndstate.qualtrics.com. I'll go ahead and click on that. Uh, in order to access that, you use your central authentication service username and password for NDSU, which is the first part of your email address, you know, everything that comes before the at sign. And then uh, this would be your Outlook password for some of you or most of you, especially if you're on campus. Uh, it would also be the password that you use to log into your computer. And then that's going to get you in to Qualtrics. So all the stuff that we looked at uh, in the other tools uh, are available uh, in Qualtrics, plus tons more. Um, if you're doing anything for research, especially long-term research, you're going to probably want to be in Qualtrics. The, the data analysis stuff is is all here beyond my, my understanding. The kind of branching that we saw is available here. And also things like piping text in. So if you have some, some information in a, in a spreadsheet or a database, you can upload that to Qualtrics and use that to pipe particular text into a survey. Um, I mean, just all kinds of crazy stuff uh, that is there. Um, all kinds of question types, uh, way more than we saw in any of the other tools and then some of the data visualization. So here's some of a uh, uh, couple things about this. You can collaborate on surveys, uh, both you know for viewing results and for actually putting the survey together uh, in Qualtrics. I wanna look for one here that has a lot of, a lot of data on it. I might have to go to page two here. Um, so if we take a look at some of these reports, 
I'm going to go ahead and click view reports on this uh, nourishing boomers survey. You'll start to get an idea of how much farther this goes beyond Google Forms or Microsoft Forms. Um, of course, I picked one with lots of results, so it's taking a long time to load. I apologize for that. Um, but once this loads, there's all kinds of data visualization that you can do. Um, and so if we're taking a look here, let's, let's look at a question that actually would um, maybe have some different data visualization on it. Um, but you can see the sort of bar chart things. If we come down to another question here, I've got my bar chart up here. I've got the percentages of the choices already figured out for me, plus the count of the choices. And then if I don't like how this looks, I can change that visualization. So I don't want to see the bar chart to show me a simple table. You know, if I want to see that in, you know, um, some of these won't make any sense with this particular question. But if I want to see a statistics table here, um, this is something that goes a little bit beyond me. Uh, in my uh, remembering uh, my research classes from years and years ago, but you can see standard deviation there and the mean and variance and all kinds of stuff. So in terms of that back end crunching the data stuff, uh, Qualtrics is definitely the gold standard here. Um, it's just that sometimes when we're collecting simple information, you know, we don't want to be swatting a mosquito with a sledgehammer. And so something like survey, Excel survey, or potentially Microsoft Forms, Google Forms uh, might serve your needs better. Also part of picking a tool here just might be comfort level, right? You might get into Qualtrics and just look at it and go, I'm not, I'm not comfortable here. You know, there, maybe there's too much going on. Um, you know, maybe you try and create a simple survey and there's too many choices um, or vice versa. Maybe this is like, this feels like home to you. And when you look at Excel survey, you're like, oh, this is too simple. It's, you know, there's not enough here. So part of it is just gonna be your comfort level with the tools as well. Okay. So I'm not gonna go into creating a, a survey on, on Qualtrics. Um, you know, it's you start by cl clicking this create project and it pretty much will guide you through that that process and a lot of how you would create questions and set them up is going to be similar to what we saw with Google Forms and Microsoft Forms. It's just going to be a lot more options, right? And you can choose to um, to use those options or not. One thing that I will mention is that there is a survey library in here, question library, you know, so you can actually uh, access um, uh, banks of questions that other people have and, and survey templates that other people have used in the Qualtrics uh, system and chosen to share. So that can give you a head start uh, on creating something as well or ideas on what kind of questions to ask. So uh, Christina is mentioning uh, the course through eExtension uh, that dealt with online surveys and, and uh, uh, specifically with Qualtrics uh, in mind as a lot of land-grant universities were adult, uh, adopting this as a tool. Um, I think some of that is still out there. Uh, it's out on Google Plus. And um, so if you go to plus.google.com, I don't think you have to sign in or anything like that um, and search for uh, online surveys, um, you might be able to find that. And if I can find that link while we're still on here, I'll post to that. Uh, it's actually a, a Google Plus group. If I'm, if we're thinking of the same course, Christina, is that right? With Steve Judd and some other people, Bridget Scott. So let me see if I can find that and post that in the conversation here before we, before we wrap up. Okay. Other questions? I do not know that. I have not used the e-extension Qualtrics. One of the nice things, that, since you bring it up, Becky, um, one of the nice things about Qualtrics too is um, that you can sh you can collaborate on surveys across systems, right? So uh, if somebody has your NDSU email and knows that you have an NDSU Qualtrics account and they're at Purdue University, let's say for instance, they could uh, share a survey with you or you could share a survey with them. 
Yeah, Dean, the, the, we're recording this, so it will be posted on YouTube and shared on the Ag Communication page. Yeah, and Becky, yeah, that that is a, it's becoming a, a common tool, especially among uh, land grant universities. So I'm working on getting the online forms community uh, linked to you guys. Um, hopefully find that here soon. Here it is. Uh, oh, okay. So Sonia has posted a link to a Google Doc that will that will have the information and lead to that. Um, here's the here's the link to the Google Plus community that they used as well. So one of those or both uh, should be hopefully will be helpful to you. Other questions, comments, concerns. All right, is Brenda's typing? No? All right, well, if you have questions about this stuff, um, you know, feel free to give me a call, drop me an email. Um, I'll help you as much as I can to the limits of, of my knowledge. And if uh, if I, we get beyond that, there's always, uh, we I can Google that for you. So um, thanks again for attending this AgCom webinar. We won't be having a webinar next month because of, of conference, because of extension and REC conference, but we'll be back with a webinar uh, in November. Watch your, your email and let's communicate for uh, information on that. All right, thanks for attending everybody.